Hi, this is Ben with Novalex Stereophonic, and today we're going to be filming part two of the KLH Model 8 restoration. Um, in this video, I'm going to be testing all of the vacuum tubes and doing a test of the audio output section if, um, if all the tubes check out. So I'm gonna fire up this Amplitrex AT1000. This is a modern tube tester. Uh, it tests both emission and mutual conductance, so it's kind of the best of both worlds, and it gives the results as a percentage of new old stock spec, which makes things really easy. Um, this is gonna be a, bit, uh, a little bit loud. I'm gonna fire it up now. We're gonna start with the output tubes. These are ECL82. Um, it's a triode uh, in one part of the bottle and a pentode in the other. So the way the, the output stage works on the KLH Model 8 is the this is one ECL82 comprises these two tube sections. So we have a triode and a pentode. These two uh, comprise the phase inverter circuit and then the final output pentodes are here. So we're gonna test those ECL82s first and then I'm just going to be writing down the two results on this diagram here. On the Amplitrex I have to scroll through. It's kind of like a, uh, a roll chart and you know, other testers. EC So I'm going to insert this in the 9-pin socket and then it's going to wait for one minute for the filament to warm up and then it will conduct the test. I have the AT1000 set up in fixed bias mode. This means that it applies a fixed negative voltage to the grid and, and does the measurement. You can also set this up for a cathode biased uh, measurement but it's not as accurate when you're comparing one tube to another because it forces the tube into a specific operating condition. So this will give us a good baseline test to see if we have a matched pair of ECL82s here. So we've got about 20 more seconds to warm up and then I've got this set to automatic mode so it'll just go, go through the triad and the pentode um, simultaneously. This does have a really cool feature where um, if you set it to manual mode, you can stop at certain parts of the test and plug in a set of headphones and uh, listen for microphonics. But in this case, I'm not concerned about that right now. So now it's conducting the test. It does the triode first. Now it's moving on to the pentode. So basically this uh, tester has a database inside of it um, with all these new old stock tube values and is comparing my emission and mutual conductance to new old stock spec. So this is looking at the triode and it's showing that the triode is pretty weak. I'm going to write down these results. Got 34% um, emission with 36% mutual conductance and then for the pentode 77 and 85. So I'm going to throw in the second ECL82 and we're going to see if the triodes also weaken that one and if the pentode sections are balanced. This is testing the triode section here and it's showing almost no current. Um, sometimes this happens if the, uh, the tube pins aren't making good contact. The filament is glowing. So if this gives me a zero result, I'm gonna redo the test and it's possible that it just needed to, uh, to warm up. Sometimes the sockets are so dirty the filament can't turn on. Looks like the pentode is testing fine. So yeah, showing a really, uh, you know, basically dead result on the triode, but the pentode is okay. So I'm, I'm going to um, redo this test, and if still nothing, I'm gonna clean the, the tube pins and then redo it. Test again, yes. So 
so this is still having issues, I'm going to lightly clean these uh, tube pins and we're gonna try this again. These are fairly dirty, but this shouldn't keep it from testing. I've got a, a, a hunch that the triode section, especially since the other one is weak, the triode's probably dead in this tube. I'm just gonna use a regular brush here. Now I could follow up with contact cleaner. Um, I also have a scratch brush that I could I could use. That's a little bit, you know, aggressive. Uh, that pencil uh, with an eraser, you know, like a regular old um, wooden pencil. The eraser usually does a pretty good job on these as well. Um, so I've just done the basic cleaning on that. I'm gonna throw this back in and see if we get any. Uh, any result on the triode. So since I had this out for a while, I'm gonna let it warm up again. Still dead. So we were getting a little bit of some signal out of the output section on video one. So what I may do just for kicks is feed an audio signal through this. And what I'd expect to see is that we're gonna have a chopped off waveform where we might only get one half of the signal. Uh, because the way that this works is the signal comes into this first tryout and this is called a paraphase phase inverter. I'll go into more detail on this on a separate video, but basically the signal comes in through the grid here of the first tryout, comes here to feed the first pentode with an inverted signal. And then that inverted signal also comes down here, gets inverted again. That gives us our push-pull in the output stage. So with one of these triodes dead, you know, if it's this one, we might still get half the signal. If it's this one, we probably won't get anything. So it'll be interesting to see what this audio output section actually does when we, uh, when we connect it and feed a signal into it. Okay, moving on to the next tube, we're going to do the, uh, the string of six AE6s here. Now the 6AU6 is a, a different bottle, it's a seven pin tube, so we'll be using a different socket. Six. AU6. You know, this is pretty dirty, let me just. to get any surface tarnish off. All right, let's take a look at the rest of the tubes in this circuit. So the six AU6s are all part of the tuner section here in a string. The other tubes that we have are a six BS8. And this one's kind of weird. They've used one half of it uh, is what looks like an RF amplifier. It's on the antenna circuit. And then the other half of it is actually driving the audio output section. So that tube's pretty important. If that, if that would fail, you'd either lose your audio stage, your tuner, or both. Um, so that's the 6BS8. And then the 6U8 is another, uh, similar to this output tube. It has a, a triode and a pentode inside of it, um, operating again in the tuner circuit. So we're gonna start with these three, get a baseline on those, and then test the other two tubes as well. Uh, 44 for emission and 47 for GM. Again, another weak tube. It's probably going to work uh, for our testing, um, but it is weak. We'll see what the other ones do. It's possible that this is the original set of tubes that was installed in this unit. Okay, we're moving on to the um, 6U8. This one is inside of a shield. So this is you know, a similar bottle to a 12AX7, just a uh, nine pin dual triode. Or sorry, the triode pentode combination. Six. Six U eight. Okay. 
All right. And the 6 u 8 on the Trout, we've got 46 36, so again, weak. And then the Pentode is also pretty weak. About 50% is kind of the cutoff of what I will leave in something um, if, it's, if it's still functioning. Okay, one tube left. That is the 6BS8. So again, similar bottle to a 12AX7. All right, for results for the 6BS8, we've got 30 and 55, weak again. And what this probably means is these tubes have been in here for a long time and they're just worn out. I'll probably replace every tube in this thing uh, by the end of the restoration. All right, let's, um, let's take the tube tester off the bench and see if we can get an audio signal through this circuit. Let's take a closer look at the audio output section of the KLH8. So, We've got our output tubes here. Remember, we've got the, the triode uh, paraphase phase inverter here and the pentode output section here. That's being driven by one half of the 6BS8. So the part I'm interested in is right here. So on the back of the Model 8, we have this quarter inch TRS jack that's labeled multiplex. And this is part of the Model 13 integration for stereo reception. So what was done here is one of these connections is ground and then uh, one pin feeds the FM signal from the 8 to the 13 and then the last pin takes a signal back from the Model 13 and feeds it directly into the audio uh, output section of the Model 8. So basically when you had those two chassis together, the Model 8 tuner here is outputting to the 13. The 13 is doing the stereo decoding, uh, amplifying one channel itself, and then sending the other channel back to the eight for final amplification. So what I'm gonna try to do here is inject a signal um, you know, into pin seven here of this 6BS8 and see if we can get audio out of the output section. Okay, I've got the Model 8 main chassis up here on the bench, and if you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. There is high voltage in this unit and potential for injury or damage to your components, so use the proper safety procedures if you are following along. Now, I've identified this section here, and basically I've taken a Q-tip and separated these two contacts that, um, in a normal situation, link the, uh, the tuner and the amplifier together. So I've got those separated, uh, with this with this Q-tip and then I'm feeding a signal directly into this connector. So basically we're simulating you know, Model 13 being hooked up or an external adapter being hooked up to feed an audio signal straight into the power amp. So this is on right now. I've got a little bit of filament light on my dim bulb here and I'm just going to start feeding a sine wave into the unit and turn up the volume. So let me raise it up to the scopes here. So I've got this loaded at 16 ohms and we are getting an audio signal through the amp section. When I turn it up, right now I'm producing just a little over one watt and it's clipping at both sides, but it's clipping evenly, which is surprising me um, because of what we observed with the tube test results. One triad section was appearing dead on one of the ECL 82s. Um, so what I can tell you is pin three on the ECL82 feeds the pentode section. So I'm gonna put my probe on both um, pin threes. So there's a signal coming into pin three of one of the tubes and the second tube. So the phase inverter is technically working and um, you know, even with that tube dead. So I'm gonna have to do some further investigation on that. But our audio section is fundamentally working and this tells us that the audio output transformer is good. Um, so it gives us a good spot to start this restoration. So uh, one more thing I wanna show you before we wrap up this video. If I 
change the signal to a square wave, we can see that it's not exactly square. This is a one kilohertz square wave. Um, I think it's by, like this by design because the speaker cabinet uh, is not uh, a flat uh, cabinet. It has certain deficiencies because of its size. So there's a preset EQ that this thing operates off of. But if I manipulate the treble control here, we can see we can alter the shape of the waveform. So what this is doing is boosting and cutting certain high frequencies. So just an interesting uh, side note there. So I'm gonna wrap up part two here. Uh, on the next part, we will start replacing components. I'm probably gonna do the full rebuild on this and then worry about uh, you know, testing and replacing the rest of the vacuum tubes afterwards. So thanks again for stopping by the channel. This concludes part two. Stay tuned for part three. We'll see you next time.